and welcome back to the last part of the French coffee maker tutorial. My name is Michael Novello and this part of the, tutorial, of the tutorial is a little bit vice versa because I first did all the things about the lightning and the texturing of the floor and now I am doing such something like a breakdown and I show it to you what I have done. So at first I have deleted all my lightning and my HDR image from the background. I put the sun lamp in there and the sun lamp is a good thing to get some good shadows here. Um, that's a real small size. The smaller the size, the, uh, the sharper are the shadows. And the higher the size, the softer the shadows are. Um, the emission strength is 2 and the location is just here, a little bit above the coffee maker and it gives a really cool shadow. The world I set it up as a sky texture um, mixed on a color mixing node with a RGB node to get a little bit more control over the color and that's it for the world settings and the material for the texture uh, for, the pla for the floor is uh, I imported just um, an image as plain if you import the image as plain you will get an op appropriate uh, aspect ratio this means the aspect ratio is imported on the size of the plane and you don't, don't have to care about the aspect ratio and it has put in there a UE map as well so you don't have to care about this as well um, in the node setup there are a few um, nodes here and I show it to you here in Photoshop I've made some maps uh, this is the original wood, wooden floor texture I downloaded it at cgtexture.com sorry um, and I've made a normal map I made the normal map with a plugin called NDO2 you can make normal maps and the other maps as, uh, as well with uh, um, Crazy Bump or GIMP or something else. There are plenty of tools out there. So if you don't have Photoshop, you can use the other ones. That's uh, how um, NDO2 works. I will explain in another tutorial and how you do this in GIMP. Uh, this will be another tutorial too. So. This is my normal map, and then I have made a bump map. <coughs> it's looking like this. It's black and white. The the higher parts are white, and the lower parts are black. And then I made a spectral map here in the scratches, and on the pattern of the wood there. Are dark parts, they are not shiny, they are rough, they have a high roughness so they are not shiny and the white parts have uh, lower roughness so that they are, they are a little bit more shiny. Then least but not last I have made a ambient occlusion map and this just helps to get a little bit more realism in the shadows and on the edges. In blend, back in Blender I have made some um, changes to the normal workflow or the normal workflow, no it's not the normal workflow, it's, it's an, this, is, this is a normal workflow for me. Um, it, there are easier solutions for this 
but this is my solution. Um, here I have texture coordinates. Um, they are going to a mapping and the mapping goes to the vector inputs of the images and I have forgot one of them here. It's for the UV so you can scale your texture like you want if you have this part here. So you have a little bit more control, you can rotate it and so on. The color comes from the color image, the colored image from the wooden texture. It goes to a multiply node and the multiply node has another input. It has the ambient occlusion. If I cut these, uh, there's a little bit of change in the, in the darker parts <coughs> and it helps to get a little bit more realism. Then I have put in the uh, RGB node. If I go directly, you see the the wood is brighter and not so contrasty. So I just added a little bit of a contrast curve here on all channels. Then for the normal mapping, I have put in here my normal map. This goes to a normal map. Uh, node and goes directly to displacement and over here I have my specular this goes to a multiply node, a map multiply node and gives me a little bit of control over the length of the specular goes to a glossy and the uh, color information from the glossy for the glossy comes from the original one floor and and it goes just to a mix shader, the diffuse and the glossy and that's it for the node setup here. The bump map is used as a displacement map. We go in here, I have added I have first I have subdivided my um, my plane here with 30 subdivisions then I've added a subsurf modifier with the subdivisions of 2 and I've added a displacement and displacement gets a texture value um, I think Blender is stuck now because I have pressed the tab key so ah, there it is let's tap out of the edit mode we can work. You see we have here uh, a little bit of subdivision and ah, it's really slow today. I really need a new computer. I pause the recording and then when it's ready I'm back. Okay, Blender has decided to be ready so I'm back and very very rare uh, here at the displacement. Um, for displacement I've added here a new texture and on the texture here I have put it in a um, displacement texture and I added here my wood floor bump map and that's it for the for the settings here. Um, in the displacement modifier I have set, set up the direction to the set axis and the texture coordinates to UV and a really low strength and you can see it if you zoom in you can see the displacement here it's not in all cases necessary to put a displacement map because it, um, it produces a lot of geometry but for realism uh, if you have a close-up and you can do it or you, your computer can do it just put a displacement there as well it helps for the realism so if we go in there, you can 
see a really cool displacement and the normal maps are working and so on. It's re really, really cool. So, that's it for the coffee maker tutorial. We modeled a, coffee, a French coffee maker. We added the materials. We have made the lightning and the floor setup and the camera uh, the camera settings here yeah. we need the camera settings I forgot the camera settings the camera settings are just like they were in the as default uh, I have not changed anything here in the render settings I just change the resolution here to get a squared, more squared uh, um, camera. It's, uh, it's not a HD aspect ratio. The aspect ratio sh is 4 to 3, like a normal old television or a camera sensor. <coughs> now the camera sensor is a little bit um, as it's different, uh, a different aspect ratio, but um, the squared camera here has a little bit further <coughs> photo object. Sorry. <coughs> um, yeah, that's it. Um, sure, you can improve the lighting a little bit more. You set some image, uh, some planes in there, and put an emission material on that. Or you can make some objects with, which are floating around and um, give a little bit more reflection on the on the metal. But for me, it, it works right now for the tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you like it, please like it um, on YouTube or on Facebook. Thank you for watching. And I see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.